M&A activity looks to be slowing down with the rest of the economy, but there still may be some opportunities ahead. And today we are looking at investing in the middle markets. Fifth Street Finance is one of the world's top lenders to private equity groups and small and mid-sized businesses, and it helps them finance takeovers. Well, CEO Leonard Tannenbaum joins me now. Welcome, Len. Great to have you here on Fast Forward. And you have a public company. You're running a public company. It's a business development corporation. And I was hoping we could start with a little bit of a BDC, just like REITs are structured in a particular way. Exactly. I think that really is important for what it is you're doing as a business is the way you're structured. Sure. I mean, a BDC is similar to a REIT in that it's a pass-through of income to the investors without double taxation. So we lend to the lower middle market and middle market and upper middle market, and we are borrowers, and we're actually an investment-grade borrower from Wells Fargo and other banks. So they lend to us, we lend to the smaller and mid-sized company. Why wouldn't they just lend directly to those smaller and mid-sized companies? Well, first of all, they don't know how to handle those types of risks. They do on an asset-backed way, but when, when, a, when a private equity sponsor buys a company, for example, let's say they're making a $60 million buyout, we'll lend them $40 million in debt, and they'll put $20 million of equity below us. So it's the combination of us and them that creates that M&A activity. So we've been talking about the banks today, particularly Morgan Stanley. Right. But to, using that as sort of a hallmark of what's happening in that industry, I mean, we've seen earnings forecasts drop pretty precipitously for the financial sector. Yes. Is that an opportunity for you? Well, unfortunately, all financial sector stocks get broad brushed and our stocks down along with the financial sector, even though we're yielding over 12 percent. So, you know, everybody uh, is sucking the liquidity out of the financial sector. Now, having said that, the banks like Morgan Stanley, who's a lender to us, actually, uh, ING Bank, Key Bank, um, are slowing their lending. And the biggest slowing, though, is coming out of the European banks. And that's creating a very a big void in liquidity in the upper market, which we were talking about before. Right. And that's going to come down to lower middle market. And so pricing is rising fast. Right. So your stock may be getting hit as it, everything seems to be trading lower in sympathy. But the reality is in the future, this may be an opportunity for you to take up market share that otherwise um, might have been a bigger lender. You know, we did that in 2008. We went public in June of 2008. Terrible time. It was us and Visa. And we were able to deploy the capital at the best time. So for Fifth Street, this is a great opportunity. It was the last cycle that, create, that made us the fifth largest business development company. And so I battened down the hatches. About two months ago, I said to my entire crew, a recession's coming. We're going to get safe. And we got already to 75% what called first lien loans or safer loans. And I pre I'm prepared for this next cycle. And I think it's unfortunately coming. So you lined up a pretty large line from Sumitomo just recently. And it probably came. It couldn't have been better timing, given what we've seen just in the last month. Ironically, we were seeing Treasury rates fall to record lows. But at the same time, we're seeing it become increasingly expensive for anyone other than the government to actually borrow. Right. Uh, look, Sumitomo came at a lucky time. I can't say that I timed this well or give me credit for it. It's a six-year relationship with Sumitomo. They were an investor in 2005 at Fifth Street and $200 million from Sumitomo to put to work when yield spreads are going up and, and really create, capture some really good opportunities for our shareholders. It's, it's lucky. It's opportunistic, but it's also lucky. It's great. The guys with capacity today, the, the people that can lend into this hard market, will make a lot of money when I think the economy recovers eventually. Where do you see the biggest, biggest opportunities? Your industry breakdown right now, deals you've done in the past, overwhelmingly is health care, 30% yes. in health care. Is that yes. an ongoing trend? Do you expect to see more in other areas like food and restaurants, manufacturing? You know, uh, health care has always been a focus of ours. It was 50% of our second fund. It's 30%, and I hope to stay 30%. Um, we hired a guy named Greg Brown in Chicago really to expand even the healthcare practice further. He was uh, one of the lead lenders at Capital Source. And it's a stable industry. Once you understand and do all your work and hire your consultants and understand your Medicaid reimbursements and your Medicare reimbursements, it's a great sector to be in. I'm most nervous actually about education. I and mean, there's no question that's where the government's going to cut and use some of its $1.4 trillion in cuts. And we've been staying out of that sector for a year or two. And so we're, we're, we're very light in education, heavy in healthcare pretty moderately heavy in technology, which I think is another great growth area for our country. Where are, do you see opportunities, though, in the near term? Just you're, you're focused here in North America. I know yes. that in Texas, you were saying there are some interesting opportunities, yes. largely to do with oil. It's amazing. The oil shale uh, boom, there's Texas, I think Oregon, too, right, um, is, is a terrific opportunity if you understand how those companies work. And we only work with private equity sponsors. 
So backing a private equity sponsor that really understands that space, um, whether it's SunTex or others, um, is how we can get into that phase. You, you have to be an expert in each area before you can lend to it, and hopefully before you invest in it. Are you seeing a big slowdown in demand right now, given all the uncertainty in the markets? You know, since August 5th, where yeah. it, which is, I think, when it all started, when we saw the S&P downgrade right. of U.S. debt, have you seen an incredible slowdown in the pipeline, or are you going to see that? Do you think it's going to pick up? I was on a panel yesterday at UBS with all these industry experts, and all of us call it the pre-labor day and the post-labor day world. Pre-labor day, there's a totally different price, different covenants, different packages, different types of deals in M&A. Post-labor day, pricing is up 200 basis points. So there's still a lot, lot of legacy deals flushing through the portfolio. We are starting to, see, to a week ago, if you would have asked me, I would have said, nope, fourth quarter looks great, M&A looks great. Today, I'm much, a little more pessimistic. You are starting to see some companies, because of the increased price of debt uh, and the royal in the stock markets, uh, starting to pull out of the M&A cycle. And so I think the fourth quarter will be down a little bit. But for lenders that have capital, right, the demand is going to come down a little bit, but the supply of capital is dropping far faster. And so it's all about that supply-demand equation. Right. And for you, with your company positioned with the line of capital, you secured most of that before all of this happened. It gives you a good opportunity. All right, Len, we have to leave it there, unfortunately. It's such a pleasure to have you Thank here you, on Lisa. Fast Forward. Really Thank you, Lisa. Really appreciate it. That was Leonard Tannenbaum, CEO of Fifth Street Finance. Well, coming up next.